right. Well, I think we could get started. We'll probably have some other people wandering in. But I'm Annie Heiser. I work for the Community Food and Agriculture Coalition in Missoula, and we manage the Farm Lake Montana program. So we, um, my role is I work with beginning farmers and ranchers all over the state, um, helping them get started. So we have business planning workshops that we offer. Those just wrapped up all over the state. Um, and we've got a bunch of other resources that I'll let you know about. But I'd like to start out by kind of hearing what you guys are interested in getting out of this talk because we can, you know, happy to move things around and make things work for you. Um, so maybe um, your name, uh, if you're farming, what you're farming, ranching, um, and maybe where you are in the process, if you're just starting or if you've been doing it for a few years, 30 years, 40 years, whatever. Um, and what you're most hoping to get out of this. That'd be great. You wanna start? Um, I'm Rachel and I kind of just got started and I've got a little bit of everything going on. Cool. So the more information, the better. Just find out what, I've got animals and all the cool information. Great, cool. Uh, I'm Ryan, <coughs> kind of in the same boat. Uh, just kind of want to take that to the next step from, you know, a small scale family farm and garden Cool. Awesome. I'm Natalie. Yeah. I got it on. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> that always helps. Does it look like it's on? Okay, cool. Good. Do you know, yeah, do you know, does this thing, can this thing change the slides? Okay, <laughs> cool. Thank you. Sorry. What, what, one more thing from you. What, is there anything in particular you're wondering about, about financing or the site or? Okay, great. Excuse me, one more thing. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to be able to hear the question, so you'll have to repeat. Okay, sure. Um, I'm Natalie, and I'm actually in the same boat as the Cool. Sounds good. I'm Jeff Arcel. I own Eon Renewable Energy. I do solar power and renewable energy, and I'm CEO of a company called Food Energy, Inc. It's building a 30,000 greenhouse control growing environment for organic food. Cool. We're growing super nutritious food with a food processing facility attached to it and I'm interested in the network and what kind of financing things might be available for food energy. Cool. Okay. Great. Can I interrupt one minute? Yeah, sure. building our infrastructure and kind of getting everything down pat over the last couple of years and kind of seeing how we could expand it to um, cool. get back off of our full-time jobs. Great. Should we start back here? And anything in particular you're interested in finding out about today or oh, I just looking out finding resources Good. Charlie and Jeff, um, looking at um, 
Mm. Okay. I'll try and loop that in. There's a, it's a different for all the different programs. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. Okay. If I miss that at any point, remind me. But yeah, I'll try and re remember to work that in. Do you want to introduce yourself too? And anything in particular you're hoping to get out of this set of topics? Um, anything. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, David Sturman, down at St. Ignatius. Uh, right on the review, what I'm wondering is, I see what I want as far as raising, but it doesn't. Hmm. To finance equipment. <clears throat> cool. Okay, good. I probably should have wrote, written all that down. That's a lot of good stuff. If there's anything at the end that you feel like I didn't hit on enough and you want me to come back to, please feel free um, to let me know. Um, but I'm going to talk. start out by talking about a few financing resources that we in particular offer, and I'll touch on a couple of the other resources that are kind of the primary financing tools that we connect people with around the state. And then from there, we'll go in and talk about FarmLink and kind of how you can find all the other resources as you, as you grow and move your farm. So this program I'm going to touch on super briefly, but the mini grant program actually is out of funds for 2017, and I'm not sure if we'll have funds for 2018. So we have a booth downstairs. It's the FarmLink Montana booth. Um, you'll see a lot of the same looking stuff uh, on there, but I'd encourage you to sign up for our e-newsletter because that's kind of the best way that we get the word out about when there are additional funds available. So, But I'll talk a little bit about this real briefly in, for when we have funds available. These are grants that we partner with the Department of Agriculture to offer. So you work with me directly. Um, to, I kind of can help you get the application done. And then I'm sort of the first round of review. And then the Department of Ag is the final review for it. And it's just for specialty crops. So um, it's not going to work for hay, grain, any kind of livestock, unfortunately. But if you're growing any of this kind of stuff, even if you're growing both, if you're doing livestock and fruits and vegetables or something like that, as long as the grant money is just going towards the fruit and vegetable part, then that's fine. It's just the project itself has to fund um, specialty crops. And the this is it's it's kind of a tricky set of things that it's that it can be used for so the best thing to do it, when we do have funds available again is to just give me a call and we can set up a time or shoot me an email and we can set up a time to chat and we can kind of talk about what the range of things is that you are looking to fund and what pieces of that might be fundable through this program because supply they're for up to five hundred thousand dollars and they're at 1.8 percent almost all the time so this is cheap money so I think so, yeah. I think it can be used for new or upgrade. I have the thing downstairs, but I'll look at it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think so, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so this is a good, good source of cheap money. Livestock forage program, if you have any livestock that you're raising for sale, <laughs> for, you know, <laughs> not for fun, uh, <laughs> enlist in this program. This program is one of those like relics of the like just random programs where you get paid for not really doing too much. If you have livestock and they have, they have had a drought in any part of your county for a certain number of months, it, they, you know, they have a different kind of rating scale, uh, you get paid. So it's a drought assistance program for forages. So if there is a place in like Quorum that has a drought for six weeks in the summer and it gets to a certain level of drought, anybody in Flathead County is eligible for a payment. So this one you have to register in advance, go in sometime in the spring, talk to your FSA agent. It's great to go in and talk to them anyway. They have a wealth of information and you have to go in to register your farm with them to be able to talk to NRCS about any of their programs anyway. So 
great to get get listed, get your farm registered with them, um, and get into that program if you have livestock. So that's kind of a range of their programs. They, the other thing that fi Farm Service Agency does on a big scale is lending. And I'm just gonna throw all of these up right now. Oops, okay. So Farm Service Agency used to be known as the lender of last resort. They don't like to be known as that anymore, but basically they're not gonna loan to you if a commercial lender will loan to you because they don't wanna be competing in the lending market. But small-scale agriculture is oftentimes something that bankers will not lend you money for. So if you're having a hard time getting financing or if you think you might have a hard time getting financing, go to FSA and talk to them about their loans or call us and talk to us about their loans um, because they've got great rates and they always work with farmers. That's all that they work with. So they understand the challenges that we go through. I'm not going to say that they're going to let you not pay your loan back, but they, you know, they, they get it and they're really willing to work with folks. I know that they just got a new loan agent in uh, Lake County who's really excited about working with specialty crop producers and she covers this whole area. Right? Yeah, she does, I think. I think I'm remembering that right. Everywhere from Missoula County south and east from there is uh, out of Dillon, but the Lake County agent is out of Ronan, and she covers Flathead County. So you've got a local office that's your county office, but all the lending goes out of Ronan. So all these programs go out of there. So farm ownership loans, they're up to $300,000. Um, they have some other benefits for, for beginning farmers and ranchers. They also have down payment assistance. So if you are buying, especially bare land, you know, bare land, your down payment can oftentimes be 30, 40% of the loan amount, which is crazy, uh, really hard to do. If you're going with a commercial lender and they're saying to you, you got to give me 20% down, Farm Service Agency can create a loan with you where you only have to pay 3% down and they'll pay that other 17%. So this is a really great resource. They have farm operating loans, which can be up to seven years, um, one to seven years for any equipment. They're really used to giving people an operating loan every year. So if you find that there are some costs on your farm that are seasonal, um, you know, it still has interest on it. But uh, if you have some seasonal costs, you know you're gonna be able to pay off at the end of the year every year and it's just a cash flow issue. They do a lot of that. They do a lot of equipment. Um, the micro loan program is up to $50,000. And it also has some kind of special things for beginning farmers. And I should actually say all the things in FSA that are benefits or where they have special rates or terms for beginning farmers are also for socially disadvantaged farmers and veterans on some of them. So um, definitely go in and see if any of those apply to you. And then they also do guaranteed loans. So. Uh, guarantee is where if you've got a bank that's willing to lend to you but they're kind of on the fence about it or maybe they are not quite comfortable with with lending to you FSA will guarantee the loan so they'll say hey if this person defaults we'll pay for it so that oftentimes can motivate a conventional lender quite a bit to help them to give you money so um, but a lot of people go to their local bank first and then hear about the guaranteed loans and are like oh that's great I can get a guaranteed loan Knowing, not knowing that these loans can still often be, at, they're gonna be at conventional lender rates, right? So five, six percent, whatever. Check with them on the direct loans first. Go to your FSA agency and check with them. Because they, if you can get a direct loan, um, they're a lot cheaper. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Say it again. Mm -hmm. The operating loans? Yeah, yeah, so they can, yeah, any kind of operating expenses. So any kind of your annual expenses. Um, and can also, they sometimes will lump structures in with farm ownership because they're a longer term. They can be up to 30 years. But some of the, like smaller structures, they can be used for a lot of different kinds of things. So, yeah. But, you know, Farm Service Agency is definitely a lender where, you know, they're still relying on kind of the community model where, they are used to lend, they're used to lending to people based on that they know their dad and they know like their whole family structure and all that kind of stuff so they know whether they're reliable and going to pay it back. So the more that you can be going into that office years in advance of when you want money from them and just letting them know, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm a legitimate business. I know what I'm doing. I know how to farm. I'm making a profit. Like, isn't this great? And building a relationship with them, the more likely you're going to be able 
be able to get a quicker turnaround on your loan when you apply and have just a better better lending process with them. So building the relationship, I don't think there's, I don't think you can start early enough with reaching out to them. On their turnaround? Yeah, so they've gotten a lot better on that. That was one thing. Farm Service Agency used to have a lot of these programs, especially their farm ownership loans. They didn't have as much money in them. And so people would apply, have, you know, because when you do, I'll take, take one step back. When you do a farm ownership loan, you have to have a buy, sell in hand. So you can't get pre-approved like you can get at a conventional lender. So you've got to already have the property, sign a buy, sell, and then you can take your application into the Farm Service Agency. So that's another reason why it's good to build up the relationship in advance. And a lot, of, a lot of times people would be submitting their applications, waiting three or four months on this property. Thankfully, the other person, the, you know, the seller hopefully was willing to wait with them, and then finding out that the program had run out of money. That has not happened in a few years. The operating loans ran out of money last year, and they were able to relocate some other funds over to it, so they were still able to make loans. And farm ownership, they haven't run out of money in a few years. But it does still take 60 to 90 days. So if that's something that you can work into your buy-sell, you know, always, t I hope I'm not repeating things that everybody already knows, but in your buy-sell, you can make a contingency for if the house is totally run down and you're not going to be able to fix it, or if your lender won't, lend you a, will, won't give you a loan for it. There's always a financing contingency in there. So just know that if you're planning on going to the FSA, you're going to need to set that out at least three months from your buy-sell date. Um, but you can definitely start working on the application in advance and have all that stuff lined up and everything, but they won't look at it until you've got a buy sell in hand. Um, that's all I have on, I have a whole bunch of other farm service agency materials at our um, booth downstairs, but any other questions on that stuff? It's a lot, farm service agency. But there's a lot of cool stuff going on there, yeah. The contact information for the person that let me, I will remember to pull that up. I'll pull that up on the, on the internet before. Is this the right thing? Yeah. Um, FSA contact. Yeah. Okay. I'll pull that up. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And if you go to FSA, if you search for FSA Montana, there's a very clear link on there of where to find your county offices. And you just search for Flathead, and then it'll tell you the loan officer is Debbie Duke down in Ronan, and it'll have her phone number and stuff like that. Yeah. Did I see one other hand? No? Okay. Yeah. How much do we need to have in our hands before we come running to you? Or before you come to me? I, I want to know what to do, and I'm really... Yeah. I'm happy to help for it pretty early on and help brainstorm and figure out, like, where you need to go and what, what are your next steps. I mean, kind of the way that I do my... Um, technical assistance appointments is just like I want to hear about your long-term goals where are you where are you hoping to get the farm in five years where are you hoping to get the farm this year okay what do you need to do to get there and then helping to like kind of set some goals and then we meet again and that kind of stuff so yeah totally <laughs> free Woo -hoo -hoo. killing consultants all over the place yeah your tax dollars you're already paid for it basically all right, I'm going to hop really quickly through some programs that are not related to me, but um, are just some other great programs in Montana. Who's already heard about Growth Through Agriculture? Oh, yay. Growth Through Agriculture is so awesome. Um, so Growth Through Agriculture is a grant that's managed by the uh, Montana Department of Agriculture, and they... Um, they, the goal of the grant is to support value-added production, which can include local marketing as a form of value-adding, and anything you have to be able to create and retain jobs. So there's some kind of odd questions in there, but there are some folks who can help you out with that application process. It is a dollar-for-dollar dollar match, but this is kind of the other big, the main big grant program in Montana. Um, it's a competitive grant. They're not e easy to get. Some people apply, you know, two or three years before they get them but you can get up to $50,000. So it can make a pretty big difference on your farm. Uh, that's all, that's all, the first dollar can be your own dollar? Yep. You can't have that first dollar be something that's another federal grant, right. but as long as it's, it can be a loan, it can be your personal money, it can be you know, that kind of stuff. So the best people to contact on this is your food and ag development centers. There's food and ag development centers all over the state. 
think there's four of them right now. There's one in Ronan at Mission Mountain Food Enterprise Center, which is a great resource if you're thinking about doing any kind of value-added project. This year, they're only having one deadline. It's due September 15th. And it takes about a month to put together an application if you're like part-timing it. So um, I would definitely recommend, if you're thinking about this one, get in touch with them before August 1st. Um, and they can help you to put through the application and help you to understand kind of what the Department of Ag is looking for and whatnot. And then there are some other grants and cost share programs. Um, USDA Rural Development is another USDA agency. They offer two grants that are really great for farmers, a value-added producer grant. So this, is, this can be quite a bit of money, and they're always looking for proposals to come from Montana. You compete in Montana, and then you compete nationally, so it's a pretty competitive grant program. But if you're thinking about making a value-added product, this can be quite a bit of money. This can be quite an investment. So great on that. And then they also have a Rural Energy for America program, which can help to fund... Yes, thank you, sorry, yeah, yeah, so if you're thinking about making a juice from your apples or, you know, whatever. Um, rural Energy for America is about getting sustainable energy on farms, so if you're thinking about putting in solar panels or wind or, uh, you know, micro hydro or something, um, definitely look into that one, it can help a lot. If you want to do research or test varietals on your farm, SARE grants, this is a Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Grant. You can partner with three to five to ten farmers in your area if you want to test varietals of something and work with extension to help to do the research right and all that kind of stuff. Um, that can be a pretty cool one, especially if you're going along with your, with your day and farming and you're like, man, I wish I had the capacity to test this other thing because I really think it would work better. It's a great way to use the funds. Specialty Crop Block Grant. Um, that comes up in January or February. It just, they just closed their deadline for this year. Um, but that is something where you have to have an industry impact. A little bit, it's tough as an individual farmer to get that one, but if there's something where you're gonna be marketing Flathead Valley specialty crops, it's a great way to use the money. Specialty, Flathead Valley vegetables or Flathead Valley apples or whatever it is, um, that can provide a lot of funds there. Red Ants Pants is a foundation. The Red Ants Pants Festival basically takes all of their funds and all, all of their, a lot of their profits and reinvests it into, um, through a grant program around the state. They really like funding women-led projects. They really like funding projects that build self-sufficiency in the community. So if you're doing those kinds of things, they just released their grant application and it's due in the next couple months. And I think they usually fund about one or two grand, but they can go up to 10 grand. So that can be pretty cool. And NRCS is an amazing resource. If you haven't reached out to, I'm not just saying that because Andrew is here. Um, if you haven't reached out to your NRCS agents, please do it. If they're the number one thing that I direct people to. It's a Natural Resources Conservation Service. And one of the programs that they offer is a cost share program where if you have a conservation project that you want to do on your property, they will share the cost of doing that. So they will grant you a certain, they don't like to use the word grant, but they'll give you a certain portion of money and you supply the rest. So high tunnels have been a big thing that they've been funding over the last few years. They have an organic initiative that can provide some additional support to organic producers, but they have like lists and lists of the things that they can fund. So you know, trees that can be used as windbreaks or sometimes some kinds of irrigation projects. There's a ton of different things that they can fund. And the great thing is that an NRCS agent will come out to your property and walk around with you and help you to figure out what programs you could access. Did I say anything that's a lie? No, that was great. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a USDA agency. They're the Natural Resources Conservation Production Assistance through Extension and your NRCS agents, your USDA agents. Um, so we really try and focus on providing some farm-specific business planning resources. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff on here. But there's help for how to find accountants that are farm-specific. There's help for how to find attorneys. Some of that stuff is still in development with some of our partners. But um, it's constantly growing. We're always adding more resources, and we'd love to add resources that are beneficial to you. So if there are things that you can't find, please let us know. Um, so we'd love to add that kind of stuff. Let me see. What else did I want to say on here? Oh, the only other thing is that in addition to this, we also offer, I guess that's not in, oh yeah, it is in here. Um, we also offer a couple of different kinds of events. We offer planning for on-farm success, which is a business planning workshop. Thanks. Actually, I'm late. <laughs> oh, okay. 
um, which is a business planning workshops that were offered all over the state. They just wrapped up, but they will be being offered again next year. And we didn't offer them here in Kalispell because they're extension led. Um, so we kind of go to wherever an extension agent calls for it. So if you would like to see this in Kalispell, let your extension agent know. Um, they're downstairs. Uh, you can tell them today um, that you'd like to see this and we'd be happy to have it here next year as well. Next week we're having um, Sustainable Farm Law 101 and we actually just launched a scholarship process for this because we had a last minute group of funds. So if the cost was holding you back from applying, please um, consider applying. Applications are only being accepted through Monday. Um, evening and this is for next weekend but a lot of different legal stuff especially I know somebody has something about lease writing and accessing farmland in general and that's going to be covered in depth um, would something like if you're not if you're on your own property mm -hmm. and you're super small is that something that could wait a year or is that, is that legally something that public record duty this is a one time only thing that she's coming here as a person from, from Illinois who's coming here to offer the workshop. So that's not something, I mean, all those resources will get added onto FarmLink, but in terms of one workshop where all that information is all at once and you got an attorney there to ask questions of, that's kind of a one time thing. But it will be available on your site once it's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, all the resources that come out of it will. And there's a, quite a few legal resources on there as well. And then in two weeks, we're having a farm and ranch site assessment workshop. So that'll be in Missoula as well. Um, but talking about how to use the web soil survey, how to use the water rights query system, so some of the online tools that are available in Montana that can help you to evaluate a piece of property, um, as well as going out to a site and doing some light soil sampling and talking, having a, a rancher and a farmer talk about what they look for when they look at a site. Um, we're also going to be having field days in partnership with farmhands he up here in the Flathead, we hope, this summer. We have field days every year, um, but usually a little bit further south. So if you're interested in that, feel free to um, visit our booth downstairs and sign up for our e-newsletter, and we can keep you apprised of all of that kind of stuff, as well as any new grants and whatnot. Um, if you have any more questions, I'm happy to stick around, and I will be downstairs. I'm also doing the farm marketing workshop that's in the afternoon. So um, happy to answer more questions, but I want to let you guys get to where you're going. So thanks so much for coming. Mm-hmm.